Hey there everyone, it is Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I am happy because this is officially my round two interview with this very, very awesome person. In fact, today I am joined by the Impact World Champion, Josh Alexander. What's up, Josh? What's up? It's good to be back two times, yes. Yes. I, 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 I was just trying to remember the game we played last time and I, 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 I can't remember. It was like random stuff, right? Yes, so last time, okay. and I switched it up for you, so I'm very excited for today, but last <laughs> time what we did was a 10 question lightning round, and I was almost going to do that one again, but I was like, no, we did it last time, I need to switch it up, so I'm very excited to get to that uh, later on in our interview portion, but as you mentioned, you know, you have been here before, and I was trying to think back, like, man, because you know, time flies really fast, so I was trying to remember, like, when is the last time Josh and I spoke, so turns out, get this, we spoke exactly one year ago, like a couple of days off. It was prior to, uh, it was a bit prior, I think it was like around July 15th, something like that. You were holding the X Division Championship at that time. And now a year later, here you are as Impact World Champion. So uh, definitely you're on the rise. Uh, so Josh, I kind of want to start off there by asking you, uh, you know, we kind of talk about this rise in your career and we're where you are right now and i know that you've held the bout now for what like so, you know, since rebellion over 76 something days uh how do you feel about your run thus far as champion uh i don't know how i feel about my run <laughs> I, I i i've been saying it a lot that i feel like the pressure of being world champion and the face of the brand and all this other stuff because like i always put so much pressure on myself before regardless of what whether i'm first match third match main event doesn't matter what show, where it is, you're always going to get the same Josh Alexander. I'm always going to want to over deliver in my match in the ring. Uh, but now as champion, you know, somebody that's touting the brand left and right, I represent this brand. And I, more than that, I represent this locker room and I have so much love and respect for everybody in that locker room. I just always want to, you know, over exceed everybody's expectations and do as well as possible. So I, I definitely feel the pressure of all this stuff. So. And it's interesting too, because, you know, clearly when any promotion makes anybody a champion, it's basically, especially your world champion, it's basically indicating, you know, the trust, the belief that they have in you to be the guy right now, the it guy at that moment. Uh, what was your reaction when you found out that this is where things were heading? Uh, shock and surprise. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I think I've, I said it uh, in an interview with actually SRS, but uh, <laughs> when I started with this company as a tag team, I used to have two people that would come up to me or three people that would come up to me all the time. And they'd be like, you're going to be a world champion before your contract's out. I'm just like, in three years, I'm going to be world champion. How's that going to happen? I was like, it's going to happen. It was always Santana from LAX, Jordan Grace, and Johnny Bravo. They would always come up to me and I'd always roll my eyes because uh, you know, I, I didn't, it took 14 years to get my contract in Impact Wrestling. 14 years is a very long time to be a professional wrestler. There's a lot of letdown in those 14 years. So you never want to, uh, you know, you can hope or whatever. You think it, it is a possibility, but you never want to dwell on that being like a thing that has to happen. And I, I certainly never thought it possible, especially with the way it's all happened. But, uh, you know, I'm embracing it. I'm really excited and happy now. So. And I feel like, you know, we, we kind of touched on this last time and, you know, this journey that you've been on. And I remember you saying like, you know, uh, you t you kind of told me a story really quickly about how, you know, during this time you, uh, you, you had told your wife like, oh my God, like, you know, after 16 years of being in the wrestling business and you finally felt like your career was picking up in this momentum that it hadn't, you know, happened before. And so you were finally having it and this was back then. And so I do want to ask you because when, you know, all of these things happen and you work so hard and you get to this level where like people are saying you're going to be world champion and then the fight the company's like yes you are world champion material here you are so my question to you is you know kind of going through this journey and finally getting here and now being here how do you think you have uh changed or evolved not just as a person but obviously as a performer as well I, I definitely put a lot more stock and value and work into the things that uh, happen outside of the ring <laughs> because uh, like I said, I'm a representation of the company in that locker room now. So I need to hold myself to the, uh, the highest possible standard at all times, not just in the ring because you know, my, 
my whole career, I just like, I was just like, I just enjoy what I do in that ring. And that's, what's going to get me ahead. And that's what I concentrated on. Now there's, there's other factors in there. And I, I, I like it because there's so many new challenges that I have to, you know, you know, <laughs> face all the time. And there's all these new, uh, like skills that I have to learn and get better at. And there's always this, there's always something to grow with there. So. I was going to say, I feel like you're already like in terms of skill level, it is up there, man. I can't even think of any new skills that you would be learning. Uh, do you want to shine some light on some of that stuff? Uh, I'm talking like skills of like this morning, I did like a breakfast television show here in Louisville. And like they're, they're carting me up there at 815. They're not telling me anything. And all of a sudden this guy in a suit standing beside me, like the, the anchor. And he's just like, here we go. Boom. And it's just like, oh, I guess. And like Jordan, Jordan's doing it with me. And she looks at me, she goes, are you ready? And I'm like, if I'm not, like, what does it matter? Like, <laughs> am I, am I going to get out of this somehow? No, I gotta, I gotta be good. So, you know, it, it's a learning thing and it's definitely a skill to be able to do all this media and stuff like that. Uh, but like, it's easy for me to talk about wrestling and impact wrestling, especially, but like just the, the grind of all that stuff. Well, I was saying, if you're doing like an early morning show and it legitimately is early morning, you got to be like, I'm up, I'm perky, I'm ready to go. Uh, it's definitely a skill that you need to, that you need to have, especially when you're out there representing the company and whatnot. Absolutely. And I, I've, I've never been accused of being an overly excited and enthused person. So <laughs> I, I got to turn myself on every once in a while. That's awesome. That's awesome. So I do want to ask you because so prior to you being champion, before we get into the specific work that you and this person did prior, we had Moose as champion. Now I had him on here on the show as well. And you know, uh, his whole story is, you know, for me, like kind of seeing Moose as champion this he's also another guy that has been on a you know momentum of his career he's doing some of the best work that he's ever done before and being champion really did a whole lot for him and obviously the work that you two did together did a whole lot for both of you so i do want to ask you josh uh first and foremost what did you think of moose moose's championship run and then also what did you think of the work that you both did together i think moose embraced his role very well because from the moment that i found out i was main eventing bound for glory moose also found out he was winning the championship but we also knew on the back end of that this long-term story was going to pay off eventually we didn't know it was going to be a rebellion it could have been slam anniversary or bound for glory it all depended you know the, the there's never any guarantees in pro wrestling but they they had a good idea that that's where they were heading so moose knew that the entire time so he knew that he had a role in this not only to be champion and represent the company and you know do all that stuff and deliver but he also had to be a heel because you've had this baby face that they were trying to build the entire time, which was me. Uh, so like he embraced that role wholeheartedly. I don't think there's a lot of people in pro wrestling these days that will really embrace the, the heel role. And I think that's why like somebody like MJF is so special. Uh, but you know, Moose, Moose wholeheartedly did it. He took the flack 24 seven online. He got it from all angles. There's no days off when you're actually embracing life as a heel. And, uh, you know, that's why the payoff was so much better when we got to rebellion, because, you know, by that time, like, I, I always say, like, if I won the championship at Bound for Glory and Moose never ran out afterwards and I walked out with that championship that night, it would have been fine. It would have been great. People would have been happy for a certain period of time. And I would have been known as the guy that, you know, was relied on to have good matches. And that that's what I did. But the way that we did it, I, I you know, even though people reacted negatively, <laughs> when it happened at Bound for Glory, you know, I, I knew that they were going to be able to get to know me over those next, you know, seven months because all the way till Rebellion, whether you, you know, Suzuki, Jonah, Charlie Haas, all these things that I had to go through there, you got to see a different side of me. You got to learn more about me. I got to show that I can talk on a microphone and, you know, just show people a different layer of Josh Alexander so that they were even more invested when I won that championship at Rebellion. I think so too. Like, I feel like the keyword that you just said right now is like even more invested because I remember watching that match and oh my God, like I really loved, it, especially like, you know, from all seeing all like the suplexes that you did at the top to, to the end where you guys did that turnbuckle spot and everything that you did during that. I remember during this match, especially after that turnbuckle spot where you guys had the near fall, I remember thinking, oh my God, if they don't have Josh Alexander win this today, like, I don't even know what my reaction is going to be to this. It was one of those things where like, everybody was like, this is it. Like, this is the moment where they need to make Josh Alexander champion. So 
So I do want to ask you, you know, your thoughts on that match in particular. And finally, that moment where you win. And I know this is, you know, it was your second time as champion, but this was like the, you know, the, you, you, I don't know if you really if you want to count the first one since it was cut so short, but I do want to know, like, how did that moment feel, uh, you know, the second time? Oh, well, the first one has an asterisk beside it. It'll go on my cagematch.com profile. But other than that, I don't see myself as a two-time champion. Uh, you know, it, it was like a weird little thing that happened. But, uh, you know, that match specifically, I, I never, I can never think of a match before, you know, I show up to the venue and talk to my opponent or anything like that. I, I don't know why. My brain just doesn't work that way. But that specific match, I was feeling the pressure of like the position I was in and the night before I couldn't sleep, which is also super rare for me. And uh, I ended up staying up, you know, most of the night in the lobby, just like writing out ideas of like the story I kind of wanted to tell in that match. And thankfully Moose had enough trust in me and Lance was our producer, Lance Storm, and he had enough trust in kind of like where I was going and, and saw what I was trying to do. So the whole story of it was just kind of to mirror the whole journey that I had in that seven months up until rebellion, you know, showing my heart and grit and grind and how I have to overcome the bigger and badder thing, you know, and this, it was Moose in the match. And that, that near fall that you, you're, you're specifically talking about where I hit the turnbuckle that's exposed and my mouth guard falls out and then I take the spear. Uh, that was all moose. That was a hundred percent moose. And it was a brilliant idea because, you know, there was a lot of doubt in people's minds the second that spear hit, whether or not I was going to actually win the championship that night. And I think like the one benefit, like, and this is like the weird thing to say, but like the only benefit of the dark ages of TNA or impact wrestling where like things were a little like weird, you know, maybe like 10 years ago is that they did enough crazy stuff like that where they didn't put the belt on who people wanted to and who like the momentum was going towards that you were like oh impact's gonna impact all over again you know what i mean so like it made that falsy that much better but yeah the payoff you know my son coming out for the entrance like that 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 night is gonna be something i never forget and i i hold my heart always and it's not just because i won the world championship it's to, to share it with my family and the match exceeded both mine and Moose's expectations it was incredible. And I should have known that Landstorm helped you out on that. Well, produced that match because, man, uh, Landstorm is very brilliant. He's the kind of person that thinks about everything and just has logic, you know, just there. Like, he knows this stuff. I do want to ask, you know, what has your experience been like working with Landstorm since, you know, he just uh, got on board with the company not too long ago? I've been very lucky to where I'm pretty sure Lance has been my producer for every match I've had since he joined the company. Uh, and, you know, we, we really get along well. We have, uh, you know, similar personalities. We're very dry humor <laughs> type people, sarcastic. And, uh, but like, as you said, we're like, we would like to apply logic and realism to our wrestling matches because, you know, I, I think I, I, this is how I feel about it. I, whether fans recognize it or not consciously, I think subconsciously they pick up on all that stuff if you really sprinkle it into a match and it makes it that much special, more special, sorry. They definitely do because one of the questions I was going to ask you, and you kind of alluded it to, uh, answered it a little bit earlier in one of your uh, responses, but I was going to bring up the Slammiversary match that you had with Eric Young because one of the things that I, in particular, well, a lot of people liked in that match was the all of the tribute spots that you guys did during that, you know, obviously the 20 years and celebrating some of the people that, you know, have, you know, come in and out of Impact Wrestling in general. And uh, that was one of the things that got me thinking, you know, and you mentioned right now that you don't put... Uh, uh, that you don't think about your matches like too like ahead of time so i did kind of want to know like what your um you know what is your like your thought process in terms of like the things that you do in the ring uh to me are very very thoughtful and so i wanted to get an idea of how you piece all that stuff together and then even afterwards after your matches you know how quickly do you watch them back and like reanalyze yourself and all of that stuff uh, well, the, my process for putting matches together and like applying that realism and like all that thoughtfulness and stuff, I, I can say it's like premeditated and all this stuff, but it, it really isn't. It's just in the moment. I, I don't think about things prior to it because there's, there's two people in a match at least. And, you know, I want to make sure everybody's happy. I never want to just put it together how I want to and, you know, leave somebody else disappointed because that happened to me plenty of times throughout my career. Uh, so, you know, it's give and take. And uh, so, like, I wait until we talk to each other. And that, that day, me and Eric, we, we talked to each other a little bit. And we had this idea where, you know, 
I wanted to pay tribute to the first 20 years and so did he. And we, we figured we can sprinkle some stuff in for the hardcore impact TNA fans that have been following since the beginning. And, you know, we, we, we did that. We tipped our cap to the, the history of the company while, you know, trying to like shine a light on the future. But uh, for me, it's just all about what would I do uh, in the moment? So like if I'm getting up, 20 minutes into a match and I know I just took the stroke and something else. I'm just like, I wouldn't do this because my neck hurts. So how do I make this make sense? So that subconsciously fans won't be like, ah, I can't believe that just happened. You know what I mean? Because like kids, kids and stuff come to shows. I say this all the time to my wrestling students and stuff like that. Kids and stuff come to the show and they'll enjoy almost everything. But the person buying the ticket and taking their children to their show, the mom and the dad are the ones that are going to roll their eyes if something you know, is at a place in a match. And the match really needs to make sense to benefit them because I think they're the ones buying tickets. So like that's that's been my approach to pro wrestling my entire life. I was going to say, unless the seven-year-olds have jobs that we don't know about, then, you know, definitely. Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay, so I do have one more question before we get into our game. So really quickly, uh, I do have to ask because, you know, we have a long list of incredible Impact World Champions, you know, Samoa Joe, AJ Styles, Kurt Angle, Kenny Omega, you know, the list goes on. Uh, now that your name is, you know, on there, uh, for you, what when people look back at the legacy of Impact and also the champions in the list, and when they look back at your legacy as champion, what do you want them? to be like this is what i remember josh alexander for Ooh, uh, i don't know what specifically i'd want them to remember me for but i i know that i want them to think of me you know in the short list of names that you just mentioned i, I would like to be neck and neck with those people i would like my dream scenario my ultimate goal here and it might be a little lofty or whatever is that when people close their eyes and they think of impact wrestling rather than think of aj styles right away you think of josh alexander and that's the ultimate goal well said well said all right so let's go ahead and get into our game portion now and this is a little game that i like to call that i like to call face morphomania so what you're going to basically be seeing is i'm going to put up an image of a person you've never seen before. And that is because they are composed of two wrestlers, two impact wrestlers that have are either currently in the company or have been in the company in the past. And you basically have to try to guess the two people that are in this photo. I'll give you one incorrect one and then another chance to get the answer right. But here we go. Are you ready to play Face Morphomania? <laughs> <laughs> I might be terrible at this, but I'm ready. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. First one up. Uh, who are the two wrestlers in this photo? Oh my goodness. I, uh, <laughs> Kurt Angle. Correct. That's one of them. Uh, just the suit gave him away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. This beard. I, I J, not James Storm, maybe. I don't know. No, uh, but it is. You're close with the beard, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Gunner? <laughs> no, oh, that's a close one too. Okay, I'm going to give you the answer. Are you ready for it? Yes. The other person that we were looking for was Matt Cardona. Ah, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> very, very thick beard. I should have known. You see it now. You see it now. Yeah. Exactly. All right, next one up. Here we go. Who are the two wrestlers in this photo? <laughs> well, that's PCO. <laughs> Correct. For sure. And oh my goodness. The, the goatee should be the dead giveaway, but uh, um, <laughs> the eyes just throw me off so much. The eyes are, I actually feel like I see the second person in the eyes, the color of the eyes, especially a little bit in the nose. Jeez, I'm, I'm terrible at this. I, I can't even guess. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'll give you the answer. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Okay. The second person was Rhino. Oh, yes. You're you right. see it now, right? Yes, automatically. That's what I said. I'm just going to be bad at this. Jeez. Okay. Uh, next one. This one, I think, is probably the hardest one. Okay. Who is, uh, what two women are in this photo? <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Deanna? Deanna, correct. That's one of them. Yeah, the eyes were a dead giveaway. Uh, oh, my goodness. I mean, I'm trying to guess what the hair could be. <laughs> uh we need jeopardy music in the background the i know right i'm like on, right? <laughs> uh, i mean taryn terrell no no but uh, you were kind of close uh the answer we were looking for was taya valkyrie 
Oh, <laughs> the hair is not this. Oh, but it's the it's, the color, yeah, the color. color. But it has Deanna's yeah. hairstyle, but with Taya's hair color. <laughs> yeah, All right, and last one. Here we go. What two okay. people are in this photo? <laughs> AJ Styles. <laughs> is it AJ Styles? Yes, yeah? that's correct. Okay, because it could have been Hornswoggle. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my goodness. It's just like a haggard AJ Styles. <laughs> uh, I'm really bad at this. It's the nose for sure. And the eyes that are supposed to give this away. Is that me? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's brutal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> at least I got one. That's why I was dying in the background. <laughs> Oh my god, it's amazing. Yeah, I usually I get like I pick like the best ones that you can like see the face and then I just incorporate it into the app and then the app works its wonders and it's always really great to see like the end results. Why, it's amazing. why did I look like a sickly AJ Styles? Like, I look so homeless. I think it was the photo. If you look at the photo, yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking it was like the photo. And once the app works, it's magic. It just like, you know, does what it does. And um, that's amazing. Josh, I had a wonderful time chatting with you once again. Before we go, uh, please let me know or let the people know where they can find you and all of that good stuff. Uh, Twitter and Instagram at walking underscore weapon and every Thursday night on Access TV at 8 p.m. for Impact Wrestling. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone.